Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to issue multiple commands inside of the terminal, as well as some different operators you're going to run into in Linux. These are going to come up in the upcoming episodes, so I figured I'd just do a video to talk about them specifically. So for example, what happens when you have an AND sign? What about two AND signs? What about a semicolon? What about two pipes? What do all of these symbols mean? That's what we're going to get into in this video. So if you've been following along, we're pretty much just going to start with a clean slate. I'm going to remove everything from the working directory. All right, so from here, we're going to first talk about the semicolon. This is used to separate multiple commands. So the easiest way to see this is to put a sleep on one side and then some command on the other, such as this. When I hit enter, Nothing happens for five seconds, and then the words hello world will show up on the screen. So pretty much, this command happened first, and this happens synchronously, which means one after the other. Once this command finishes, this command is issued, which will echo hello world to the terminal. Next up, I wanted to talk about a single and sign, or an ampersand. This is going to execute some command in the background. To show you this, I actually want to create a script real quick that we can execute in the background. So I'm going to do this by saying echo and what goes inside of these single quotes is what's going to go inside of the script. You can also just open a text editor, but you know, why not just make it more difficult on yourself and do it all in one command. So we'll just say echo. <laughs> so our script is actually going to echo as well. So hello world inside of double quotes. And we're going to direct this entire thing into a file called script. So pretty much we're going to take this and echo it into a file called script. That's why there are two echoes here. So when I press enter, I can say cat script to see the content and it says echo hello world. So if we execute this as a script, basically this will be interpreted as a bash command. So to do this, what we will do is we will say dot slash and then the name of the file script, which will almost work, but not quite. You see, it says permission denied. And when we say ls dash l, script, you can see that's where this comes in. This dash we haven't really talked a whole lot about is executing the file. So if we wanted to add that permission, we can say chmod plus x, which will add the execute permission for everybody, and then just put the file name. And now you should see read, write, execute, execute, and execute. So now when we issue that command from earlier, dot slash script, it's actually going to execute the file and put the output of the script in the terminal. You can see that's different than this. This is the command that's actually executed and this is the result. So that's how you can create a script. Obviously you could edit it with nano as well. So we could say nano script and you could go in here and add commands. So for example, we could say sleep 10, control X to exit, yes to save, enter for the name. And now when we issue that same command to execute the script, it's gonna wait 10 seconds and then say hello world. So now we have a script that takes 10 seconds to run. So this is where we can practice running something in the background. We can use the and sign to say, hey, run this script in the background and let me do something in the meantime. So we don't just sit there waiting for 10 seconds. And this is a fairly fast script. What if we had one that was doing a bunch of stuff? We can say dot slash script and sign, hit enter. That's going to run in the background and then we can do other stuff in the meantime. So I can issue this command and eventually that original one is going to finish. Hello world. And you can see it finished here. When you use the single and sign, it goes to the background. You can see the processes in the background by saying jobs and you can see it running right there. You can bring it to the foreground with FG and now it's waiting and it finishes. You can use the single and sign followed by another command such as this. In this situation, the script is going to execute in the background, and then we're going to echo some string here. When we hit enter, we get the output immediately, hello first, and then the background task is going to execute. It takes 10 seconds, and eventually that output's going to show here. So that is how you can issue an asynchronous task in the background while you do something else. Another thing you're going to commonly see is two and signs, and this will basically execute these tasks synchronously. So it's going to wait for that first one to finish and then execute the second one. 
This is different than the semicolon because it's only going to execute the second one if the first one doesn't error out. So let's take a look at an example. Let's first just do it normally. So we'll just add another and sign here, hit enter. It's going to wait 10 seconds, finish the background script, and then it's going to echo this command here, which is no longer going to be first, it's gonna be second. So it's a little confusing with the words there. <laughs> Maybe I should fix that, but I think you guys understand. Basically, this script executes first and we wait for it to finish because we have two and signs. This is going to be the exact same behavior as the semicolon. And there you go, you can see we get the same output. The difference here is with the two and signs, if this threw an error, then it's not going to issue the second command. Obviously, script is very vague and a lot of different things could happen in that. So with whatever example you're working with, there's a big chance an error could be thrown. An easy way to see this is to just use a command you know is going to throw an error, such as if you try to explore a directory that doesn't exist. We'll just say not a thing. This is going to give us an error, right? So if we said that with two and signs and then something like echo found the directory, well, here's what happens. It says cannot access not a thing and this echo never executes. If instead we decided to use a semicolon, such as right here, it's going to do that second command no matter what. So I'll show you an example of that. This shows no matter what. And we will replace the and signs with a semicolon. Hit enter and then you can see that output down here. So far so good, we've talked about the semicolon, the and sign, and the double and sign. Now another one, which I actually briefly mentioned in a previous video when we were talking about pipes, you might see two pipes in a row. And this is actually not used for piping, rather it's used in a similar nature to what we're doing here, where we want some command to conditionally execute. So it's gonna look something like this, where we have some command, and then two pipe symbols, and then some other command. And this is going to work very similar to the and signs, but the difference here is that this is an or operator instead of an and operator. And in this situation, it's one or the other. So if this command executes successfully, then there will be no execution of echo hello world. So basically, if it does fail, then this second command will be executed. When we hit enter, this echo is not going to be executed because the script doesn't error out, so we just get the output of that script. If we do what we did earlier where we try to list the contents of a directory that doesn't exist, or we issue another command, in this situation, the echo will only show up if this errors out. In this case, it does, it says failed. So they're pretty much opposites. You can take a look at this line here, the second command will execute if the first one is successful. For this one, the second command will execute if the first command fails. So do this or this. So altogether, we learned some pretty good operators. These are known as control operators and there are other ones out there. This is the basics and we might come back and look at some other ones, but this is what we're gonna be needing for the upcoming episodes. So hopefully that was helpful and gave you a pretty decent understanding. These same symbols can be used for conditionals when we get to bash scripting. If you wanna check the value of something or branch like an if statement or a while loop, these symbols are going to show up again. If you come from other programming languages, you're probably familiar with that. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes in the next video. We're probably gonna talk about how to install software on Linux. So that'll be pretty fun. It'll allow you to explore different software out there. Thank you, I'll see you in the next one. And subscribe.